Want to know what I keep in my get home bag? This is Ben with Robinson Reconnaissance and today I'm doing an item by item overview of what I have in my get home bag. My get home bag is the Eberly Stock H31 Bandit. A get home bag or 72 hour bag is a type of emergency preparedness kit that contains essential items and supplies to help an individual survive for up to 72 hours in case of an emergency or disaster. These bags are designed to help people get home or to a safe location in case they're stranded or unable to leave their location due to a natural disaster, civil unrest, or any other emergency situation. The contents of a get home bag may vary depending on the individual's needs, location, and potential risks. Generally, a 72-hour bag includes items such as water, food, first aid supplies, shelter, communication devices, personal hygiene items, and tools. The bag should be lightweight, portable, and easy to carry so that it can easily be transported in case of an emergency. This is the Eberly Stock H31 Bandit Backpack. It is a 2.5 pound, purpose-built, rugged, everyday carry pack built for day-long hikes and hunts. It is also Eberly Stock's lightest pack. The exterior utility panel features laser-cut molly webbing to allow the attachment of equipment, accessories, and pouches, and to carry a jacket or gear for quick access. The water bottle side pockets can hold a tripod or spotting scope. Inside the top lid you'll find small item organizers like a zippered mesh pocket and a pistol magazine pouch. It has an adjustable shoulder harness and the main compartment easily unzips from top to bottom to allow full access to your gear. It also has an interior clip for securing a hydration bladder similar to a camelback. It comes in a variety of colors including coyote brown, black, gray, blue, sky camo, mountain camo, multicam like my pack seen here, OD green, mirage camo, and light tan. I prefer this Eberly stock pack because I simply believe in the company, which is right here in the USA in Idaho, founded by Glenn Eberly, field tested in the harshest outdoor environments and proven to execute the mission to perfection. This is the Grail Ultra Press TI water bottle purifier, the world's first titanium water filter and purifier bottle. This is the Nosler Covert Edition, which is in partnership with the ammunition company Nosler USA. This water bottle holds 16.9 ounces, and this ultra pressed titanium bottle delivers unparalleled strength to weight ratio, long lasting durability, and multifunctionality not found in other water filter bottles. Like all Grail purifiers, it utilizes Grail's patented press to purify technology to remove all global waterborne pathogens, virus, bacteria, protozoa, and filter out heavy metals and chemicals, including lead and PFAs. The outer TI cup can be used to heat water and cook food over a fire or on a camp stove like a jet boil. The Grail filter not only works great for quickly filtering water while on the go, but they also have a very minimal footprint and weigh almost nothing. The ability to also use it to cook with along with the strength of titanium is really an essential lightweight tool for going out in the field further for long periods of time. This Grail bottle is a useful vessel to carry filtered water, or you can use it to filter water and then boil the water again over a fire to ensure it is double filtered and free of any bacteria. You can then pour it into the small clear plastic bottle that I also included in my pack. You will notice a theme with my get home bag which is redundancy. It's very useful to have some redundancies with certain equipment. For example, multiple ways to filter water, multiple ways to make a shelter, or multiple ways to start a fire and stay warm. Just in case one item does not work or fails you in the field, it is always nice to have an array of tools or ways to get the job done. Redundancies provide you with an extra peace of mind and comfort knowing that you will have the necessary tools when an emergency calls. This is some bear spray from UDAP, which I purchased at Costco. This bear spray comes with a holster and you can easily carry in the backpack, side pocket, or on, the, on your hip for quick access. The bear spray has a 30 foot spray range and can help deter a bear attack or other large predators in the wild. It can also be used on human assailants or bad guys should you be attacked and have a need for protection. Attached to the exterior of my pack, I have 100 feet of 550 heavy duty paracord. This is a 100% nylon utility cord that you can dissect and break down even further to the inner core threads for fishing lines, sewing threads, and more. Paracord has a ton of uses and can be used to rope up shelters, lash gear together, wrap handles, and hang dry wet clothing items. The two carabiners I keep on the exterior of my pack are the Mammoth Workhorse with an orange screw lock and the Black Diamond Pear Lock with a green screw lock. 
Carabiners are a convenient way to hang anything and have lots of utility in emergency situations. I like the lockable ones as they can easily be lashed to your pack and be hand tightened and secured. Another item lashed to the exterior side of my pack is a small pair of Bushnell binoculars. These allow you to do some quick reconnaissance regarding your location, look for landmarks or glass the land for hunting or animals to potentially catch as a food source. Binoculars also allow you to keep on the lookout for anybody seeking to do harm during times of civil unrest. A pair of binos allows you to see what's coming your way and be more aware of your immediate surroundings. Observing your camp or place of survival is important to get you home to safety or to ensure your longer term resilience in an emergency situation. Attached to the shoulder strap of my pack, I have a Montana Knife Company Mini Speed Goat fixed blade knife wrapped in black paracord and attached to my pack with its included Kydex sheath. At 6.5 inches and 1 ounce, the Mini Speed Goat is the first practical fixed blade EDC knife. I particularly like how low profile this knife is, and it's virtually unnoticeable when clipped inside a pant pocket. Plus, the 3 inch blade makes the Mini Speed Goat legal for open carry in most US cities. The MKC blade is 100% USA handmade in Montana by master bladesmith Josh Smith and is made from cryogenically treated high carbon ball bearing steel, achieving the perfect balance of toughness, edge retention, and easy resharpening. The blade is also parkerized to a matte black finish which minimizes rust and glare. The skeletonized paracord wrapped handle sheds ounces and reduces hand fatigue. The mini speed goat is also incredibly thin at 0.095 inches at its thickest point and 0.01 inches at the edge, making it incredibly easy to sharpen, maintain, and carry. Each mini speed goat comes with a 100% made in the USA custom MKC Kydex sheath. The sheath features a built in retention screw to customize blade tension and allow for handle down carrying. The handle is wrapped in 6.5 feet of 550 paracord. This extra paracord can fix a broken boot lace, tie down a tent, hang meat in a tree, or help in a number of unexpected emergency situations. Readily accessible at the very top of my pack, I have a small zip pocket. I use this area to hold the more frequently needed items that I need to grab quickly. First I have my Garmin InReach Mini. This is a super lightweight and compact satellite communicator device. If I need assistance or have an emergency, this InReach allows me to send interactive SOS alerts anytime, globally, to commence emergency rescue. No matter where I am, two-way messaging allows me to text message loved ones and let them know precisely where I am with location tracking and GPS coordinated sharing. I can also get weather updates delivered to the palm of my hand. InReach is super light and allows me to maintain off-grid contact when I'm on the go. In the top pocket I also carry a Storm 500R headlamp. This is the Sitka Optifade Camo Edition. This is a 500 lumen max output headlamp that is rechargeable via a micro USB charge port on the side of the lamp. I like how light this headlamp is, plus it is fully waterproof and dustproof. Brightness memory allows you to turn the light on and off at a chosen brightness without reverting back to default settings. The settings also include full strength in proximity and distance modes, dimming, strobe, red, green, and blue night vision and lock mode. This top pocket also holds three feet of extra orange 550 paracord, some extra battle cord from Atwood Rope which has a 7 strand core and a 350 pound tensile strength, some SPF 20 mineral sunscreen, a sharpie pen to write messages with, some business cards for identification and for writing messages on the back with a sharpie pen, and some extra cash. Cash can be used in an emergency to acquire needed tools or items. It's good to have cash as a means of trading with others, and US cash almost always holds intrinsic value to most people across the globe. I carry a pair of Leatherman Raptor Rescue Multi-Tool Scissors in tan and black. These useful emergency shears are stainless steel folding medical shears with a strap cutter for cutting seatbelts or other heavy duty straps, or scissors for quickly cutting clothing or other fabric. They also have a ring cutter, a 5 cm ruler, an oxygen tank wrench, and a carbide glass breaker on the end which can be used to break car windows in emergency crashes. The Raptor shears fold down super compact and fit perfectly into a clippable Kydex sheath for ease of carry. Lastly, in the top pack pocket I carry a Benchmade Adamas automatic knife in olive tan. This is a 3.8 inch brown Cerakote finished drop point blade with an automatic thumb slide opener and OD green G10 scales on skeletonized steel liners. This knife has a secure access lock and a reversible deep carry pocket clip. It comes with a Coyote Tan nylon sheath that is compatible with a Molly strap system. 
At just over 6 ounces and an overall length of 8.9 inches, this knife is beefy enough for bushcrafting, batoning, whittling wood, hunting, and for self-defense. Now we get to the main zipper compartment of my get home bag. First off, I have a clear plastic bottle that can be used as a vessel for water. I have chosen to leave this bottle empty for now, but it could definitely be filled up to have water ready to go. This just adds to the weight of the pack, so I chose to leave it empty for the time being. At the very top of the pack, I have a bright red first aid kit. Medical is perhaps the most important component of this pack. In my med kit, I have a ton of emergency medical supplies such as gauze, adhesive fabric and plastic bandages, blister band-aids, antibiotic night neosporin ointment, antiseptic towelettes, bite and burn cream packets, ibuprofen, aspirin, gauze roll and pads, wound closures, cold pack, small scissors, and other essential first aid items. This first aid kit has convenient packaging. The kit comes in a soft-sided zippered fabric case complete with mesh pockets inside, designed to keep first aid supplies neatly organized and easy to locate. Inside this first aid kit for quick access, I also have a bright orange SOF tourniquet from TACMED Solutions. This tourniquet is used to control or stop severe bleeding in any limb. Having a tourniquet at the ready and within easy reach is one of the paramount items for preparedness. Next, I have a small Ziploc bag with a tiny portable battery charger and charger cord with a variety of built-in adapters for recharging phones and other handheld devices. I have an extra pair of black socks. I usually wear shoes in most scenarios, but having an extra pair is nice, especially when you're moving on foot and mobile. I also have a fabric shemog in OD green, which can be used as a make-do mask for concealment, to filter dust out of your face, or for a variety of other emergency uses. This shemog can also be cut and modified as needed in the field. For emergency lighting, I usually carry a few O-Lite flashlights, which are compact and fit into the side pouch interior of my pack. Here I have a 1500 lumen EDC Olight Baton 3 in OD green and the smaller 1200 lumen EDC Olight Baton 3 in black. Both flashlights have a magnetic tip which allows you to stick it to most metal surfaces like your car or side of a metal building. These lights have three or four settings and have proven to be reliable time and time again. They are both rechargeable via USB and also have emergency flicker mode. They are incredibly bright and can also be used as a defense item when shined in an assailant's eyes. They are my go-to flashlights, and O-lights are part of my normal EDC. I have a bunch of them scattered all over my car, my off-grid homestead, and my house. Next, I have a small, clear Ziploc bag full of 25 rounds of extra ammunition. In this case, I typically EDC carry a 9mm pistol. It's nice to have some extra rounds of 115 grain ammo for your firearm if you need it for self-defense or for hunting purposes in the wild. Although it packs some weight, ammo is a nice convenience to have for actual emergency utility, and similar to cash, you can use ammunition to trade, barter, or make a deal in a total pinch. My next get home emergency item is a shelter. I use the No Cry 12 foot by 10 foot lightweight survival camping tarp. This is a waterproof tarp in OD green that makes a great lean to shelter, A frame shelter, backpacking tarp, or a hammock shelter. This tarp conveniently comes with six small carabiners, six small stakes, seven small pieces of rope, and a five-in-one survival bracelet. This small survival bracelet includes a plastic scraper, some seven-strand paracord, an emergency whistle, a compass, and a flint fire starter. All of this is contained in a relatively small carrying pouch. Having a shelter or rain fly to stay out of the elements is paramount in survival. Staying dry and out of the wind and rain is definitely key. The No Cry Rainfly is 100% waterproof and provides full UV protection from the sun, which is also an important consideration when on the move or bugging out. This tarp has heavy duty grommets and double layer technology at all corners with long 2.8 inch loops and heavy duty stitching. Having a durable shelter is one of the primary considerations when in the outdoors. Next up in the main compartment of my pack, I have a Life Bivy from Go Time Gear in OD Green. This is an emergency sleeping bag, thermal bivy, that can be used as an emergency bivy sack, a sleeping survival bag, or a mylar emergency blanket. This 4 ounce bivy comes in a lightweight stuff sack and the bivy itself is waterproof, PET mylar and has sealed seams that lock out the wind, rain, and snow. This is a good way to stay warm, dry, and safe in an emergency situation whether you're in your car, on foot, or in your shelter.
I like this bivy because it's smaller than a soda can and it can also be used as a shelter if needed. This is where the redundancies I mentioned earlier come into play. It also includes a 120 decibel survival whistle which can help alert rescuers up to one mile away. My get home pack also includes a pair of mechanics wear, fast fit gloves, and multicam. These provide some strong utility for multitasking or bushcrafting and double as a hand warming option in the cold when temperatures plummet. I also have a separate utility pouch made by Savage Threadworks. This pouch is in RELV Moab camo and contains my sanitary items, some food, and some other small utility tools. My clear sanitary Ziploc bag contains some Alpine provisions body wipes, some Purell sanitizer, hand wipes, and some Coleman camp soap biodegradable soap sheets. And of course I had to include my trusty Sonic the Hedgehog hand sanitizer. Sonic's my favorite cartoon character and comic. Who doesn't love Sonic the Hedgehog? In another Ziploc bag, I have a plastic spoon and fork combo from UCO, a lightweight bamboo fork, some instant coffee packets, some Cholula hot sauce packets, and some Haribo gummy bears, because why the heck not? I also have some Country Archer grass-fed mini beef sticks, some raw organic sugar packs, and two granola bars, dark chocolate coconut almond bars from Caveman in this case. Other items in this Relv camo pouch include some plastic zip ties, the Leatherman Bit Kits, which provide a large assortment of bits for my stainless steel Leatherman Skeletool, which I always EDC carry, some rubber bands, some Velcro straps, and some extra carabiners. I also have some small metal carabiner hooks, which are pretty sturdy, another Sharpie pen to write with, and some toggle tightening straps. Last but definitely not least, I have a larger clear gallon Ziploc container that can be used as yet another vessel to carry or trap water but it also contains my fire making supplies. In this fire kit I have large 6 or 7 inch waterproof matches, two packs of smaller UCO waterproof matches times 80, an empty toilet paper roll with toilet paper stuffed inside of it, brown paper napkins, cotton pads and cotton swabs with Vaseline on them. Petroleum jelly is an efficient source of fuel for ignition. Three Bic lighters, one MK, outdoor butane torch lighter and one Zippo mag striker which is a ferro rod and striker. This ferro rod provides sparks to light a fire anywhere and its extra sharp blade allow for precision and quick fire starting. I could also use one of my knives or leathermen to create sparks with this ferro rod on kindling, small sticks or dry twigs. When it comes to fire there's no such thing as too many redundancies. Heat is essential and crucial for survival, cooking, heat, boiling water, drying wet clothing, smoking meat, or to alert SOS with smoke in a rescue situation. In this gallon Ziploc bag, I also have a few extra Ziploc bags, four individually packaged hand warmer packets, one life straw which allows me to filter water from a dirty stream or lake, and one time use breakable emergency glow light stick in bright green yellow. All in all, the get home bag or 72 hour bag is an essential get home or get to safety tool that provides you with mobility, preparedness, and the emergency items needed to see your trip through. Most likely your trip will be on foot, but it can also be through overlanding, in a car, off-roading, or on a bike. The Get Home Bag provides you with peace of mind and comfort knowing that you have everything you need to survive over the course of an extended period of time and to get back to a more stable environment. Taking the time today to stock your pack full of the necessary items that you'll need is important for you and your family unit so that you guys are ready when the time comes or an emergency strikes. Being prepared is more than just having a go bag or a bug out bag in your car, home, or office. Get home bags allow you to move to cover and security in a natural disaster, civil unrest, or any other emergency situation. Here in Colorado, evacuations are a reality due to natural disasters in the mountains, such as wildfires or forest fires. It's only early April now, yet Colorado is super dry and is already experiencing an early start to wildfire season in 2023. It's best to be prepared and ready to evacuate at a moment's notice. Thank you for subscribing to this channel and for watching Robinson Reconnaissance. Please let me know if you have any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I am curious if you think I forgot any essential items or if there is anything different that you would include in your get home bag. There's no right or wrong in preparedness. Items can be substituted for other items, but one simply can't get away from the absolute basics of clean water, sufficient shelter, food, fire, heat, and self-defense. It definitely pays to stay prepared.
This has been another episode of Robinson Reconnaissance focused on get home bags or 72 hour bags. I hope you learned something and hopefully that you could put one together for yourself to be allow you to be more prepared and more a sustainable off-grid for any sort of future emergency that comes your way or natural disaster that occurs or human disaster in that case. For a future video I plan on taking this bug out bag out to an actual camping environment to where I can test this thing out for three days and see if I'm able to sustain and survive with, with everything and all the contents of this bag. In the meantime I'll continue broadcasting from way out here in the off-grid treehouse. Peace out. Thank you.